Cosmic. They're conscious of the cosmos all the way through. And you notice the two boats facing each other, the Munjet bark and the Mescatet bark, the morning bark and the evening bark, the cycle of time and the sun. So here we have the hypocephalous motifs between what? Between facsimile one and facsimile two, next facsimile three is coronation. Now we emerge directly from the passage room with the celestial room, the passage through the kingdom, the passage through the cosmos rather, not the celestial, to a coronation. We would say facsimile number three. This is the king on his throne and all of these are typical coronation figures celebrating him, endowing him with the things he needs and so forth. After passing through the cosmos, our hero, be it Abraham or someone else, now sits on the throne of Pharaoh and is endowed with his power. And notice he's holding, he is holding, of course he has to hold, the, uh, the insignia of justice and judgment, the flail and the hook, and he's been hailed as the living king. Like this soda, 
and no one among my people would jump into the big woo. They've traded with this man, your father, for a hero. We have no hero of our own. I am the Toby. I cannot be the hero. It is my place to hope for my people. But the woo calls, and no one from my people says, I'll go to my end for the rest of you. I, I don't have any people of my own, Chief. I'm my only hope for a hero. Once more, I'll call upon the Waponies for a hero. Who knew Woe's away? Who knew Woe? The drama said, sets away. Come along. Now. Who come along? Who wants his flesh? Take me to the volcano! Wait! Stop right there! I love you. I've fallen in love with you. I've never loved anybody. I don't know how it happened. I never even slept with him or anything. And now you're gonna kill yourself. Can you give us a minute? You love me? Yes, I love you. I can feel my heart. I feel like I'm going crazy. You just can't die and leave me here on the stinking earth without you. I've got to do it. Why? Why? The chief doesn't even want you to do it. Do you, chief? Because I have wasted my entire life and I'm going to die. Now I have a chance to die like a man and I'm going to take it. I've got to take it. I love you. I love you, too. I've never been in love with anybody before, either. It's great. I am glad. <laughs> but the timing stinks. I gotta go. Joe! Go back now! Get out of here! No! Please let me do what I gotta do! Marry me! What? Chief! Chief, could you come up here, please? What the hell are you doing? I, I want him to marry us. I'm gonna jump in the volcano! Oh, so marry me and then jump in the volcano. What? Could you marry us, please? Okay. I don't want to get married. What is the problem? You're afraid of the commitment? You're going to have to love and honor me for about 30 seconds. You can't handle that? All right. Marry us. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do you want to marry her? Yes. Do you want to marry him? <laughs> yes. You're married. I'm going now. Don't jump in. Patricia, you listen to me. These are my last words. I gotta be brave. I gotta jump in. Goodbye. Words, you know. What? I can't think of anything to say. I'm jumping in with you. Oh, no, you're not. Whether thou goest, I go. You didn't sign up for this. I do what I want. Don't do it for me. I'm not doing it for you. Joe, nobody knows anything. We'll take the sleep and we'll see. We'll jump and we'll see. That's life. I saw the moon when we were out there on the ocean, shining down on everything. I've been miserable so long, years of my life wasted and afraid. Been a long time coming here to meet you. A long time on a crooked road. Did I ever tell you? The first time I saw you, I felt like I'd seen you before. You're not going anywhere without me. So what are we hoping for here? A miracle. A miracle. Okay. I love you. You do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is it. Okay. Oh, this is it. Give me your hand.
love you too. Okay. I suppose it is. I mean, it's great! Yeah, that's, that's good. Hey, I'm relieved. That's great. I'm saved! <laughs> but still... No, well, what, what, what is it now? We're on a raft. There's no land in sight. I don't know. It's always going to be something with you, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though. What? Wherever we go, whatever we do, yeah. we're going to take this luggage with us. Deal. I wonder where we'll end up. Hell, away from the things of man. Away from the things of man. The ball is what comes after life. See, that's what they want to know. But the main idea is, you see, we're talking about this making connections and, and hacking in or getting into the circuit and so forth. These temple ordinances and things, they put you into an eternal, to a different order of things, and which the world will not understand. And if you try to make them vulgarize down here and treat them as, as if they belong to this universe of discourse, then you spoil them. But you have this general sense now, you see, of working ourselves into a much larger universe of discourse. We have been very localized here, and Joseph Smith's had a mind as broad as all eternity, and he introduced us into all of this, and then we immediately, our first reaction is to flinch and draw back. We say, well, let's go back to, to tithing in the word of wisdom, and, and that's the story. It's a mystery because it's not known to the, the world we see around us. It is a mystery in that sense, but it shouldn't be a mystery to you. You're free to go as far as you want, and it's entirely up to you. We're all still qualifying as Osiris as far as that goes. We must do the works of Abraham. And then we're told specifically in the Doctrine and Covenants, that means sacrificing, if necessary, your own life. Abraham was willing to do that, and everyone at some time or other will have the opportunity to show that he'd be willing to do that. Remember, we're told that Abraham was tested to the last extreme, to the ultimate extremity, as we're told in the Doctrine and Covenants. Unless you're willing to give everything, you cannot claim eternal life. It's not to be cheaply bought. These are the great blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and must be brought, they must be willing even to give life. Abraham was that through him, his people and all mankind should be blessed. This Abraham, who towers like a colossus, is every man, as every man should be. In this world, remember what the Lord promised the apostles, in this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. 